briefly uh, what you do and okay. where you do it. Okay, I, I, I teach at the Monterey Institute of International Studies. I teach from English into Japanese uh, translation, side translation, consecutive interpreting and simultaneous interpreting. And I also teach research on interpreting. I do research. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, mainly interested in what kind of people become interpreters and how they become interpreters. So I've been doing some research on uh, the history of interpreting, uh, uh, interpreter education, and uh, social cultural aspects of uh, translating and uh, interpreting. Okay, is that with Japanese or in general? Uh, in general, but uh, mainly in the Japanese context, mm -hmm. yes. What about your publications? Oh. <laughs> a new book, you have a new the book. new book, yes. I have a new book that just came out. Um, it was published by the uh, University of Ottawa Press. Uh, the title is the um, uh, Interpreting the Tokyo War Crime uh, Trial. Um, uh, it's based on my dissertation, which I defended in 2007. Um, I have to say I'm not a huge fan of the cover of this book. I wasn't involved in the design and language. I don't, have, language. It I don't <laughs> have it yeah, here, but, okay. uh, uh, but you know, people say that uh, you can't judge a book by its cover. I believe the content is great, so I hope the uh, <laughs> well, content is good. So <laughs> I hope uh, uh, people get to um, have a chance to read it. Tell, tell us it's a bit about, about, uh, the, the, about the, the book. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's based on my dissertation, which was about uh, uh, the interpreting arrangements at the Tokyo War Crimes uh, trial, which is the Japanese counterpart of the uh, Nuremberg trial. Uh, right after the um, the war, and uh, I mainly discussed uh, some interesting social political aspects of uh, this arrangement because there are three layers of uh, people: um, uh, Japanese interpreters, uh, mainly Japanese diplomats. Uh, they interpreted the, the proceedings, and uh, uh, their interpretation was monitored by Japanese American. And, and there was a um, language uh, arbiter uh, who was a um, Caucasian um, officer of the U.S. Army who made rulings on any disputes on interpreting and translation. Um, actually, um, my Japanese book based on the dissertation was published in Japan in 2008. And with this new um, book, I added one chapter and also uh, I added some information I obtained after the publication of uh, um, Japanese, my Japanese book. If I understand, there's an added chapter in the Japanese book? That's no, no, in, in the English, English book. book, English book. And what, what's the other chapter? Well, about? because not many people are familiar with the trial itself, mm -hmm. so I added a chapter on the trial itself. Um, you know, it's, it's just a general description of uh, what kind of trial it was. So what's interesting is the hierarchy of control. Right, exactly. That the hierarchy. Japanese were controlled by the Americans, even though the Americans yes. didn't know Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Roughly speaking, yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your current research? Current research, I'm mainly working on um, interpreter education in general. Okay. I'm, uh, for example, one of the, uh, the research topics I've been trying to work on is that uh, um, I have this hypothesis of, uh, based on my observations. My, my um, so-called late bilingual students do better than so-called early bilingual students in my class, and I want to know why. So I've been trying to um, do some research on that. Good. Mm. Okay. So that'll be a new book? Ah, uh, hopefully. <laughs> yep. okay. Can we go back when you were uh, 23, uh, 24? Wow. Where, <clears throat> where were you? How did you get? I okay. Uh, it's a oh, uh, it will be long. I was uh, traveling uh, by myself, um, mainly in Asia, mainly in India and Nepal, and I was writing articles on You're my a trips. Hippie. I'm. <laughs> I'm not. I don't belong to the hippie generation. Okay. Yeah, I, I. I guess I was a hippie wannabe. Mm -hmm. um, I was writing articles on 
my trips to India and Nepal for newspapers and uh, magazines, and but I couldn't make a living by writing. So I started teaching English privately, and I also started doing some translation. I, I loved the, the work of translation, but I uh, didn't feel right about uh, not um, uh, having uh, received formal training in, in translation, so I decided to come to the Institute, Model Institute, to uh, study translation. I wasn't interested in interpreting. I didn't think I could become an interpreter, so my original intent was to study uh, translation here. But my professor encouraged me to study interpreting as well, so I ended up uh, receiving a master's degree in translation and interpreting. Since then, I've been uh, working as a freelance interpreter, mainly. I, I do some translation as well, but mainly uh, as an interpreter uh, for uh, international conferences, uh, corporate litigation, mm -hmm. mainly uh, patent uh, infringement cases and product uh, liability cases. And I also do uh, investor relations. I, uh, I started teaching here around 1994 at the beginning, uh, I was teaching uh, part-time most of the time. Uh, my priority at that time was to establish myself as a conference interpreter in the market. Uh, I was uh, always interested in research, uh, but I was busy interpreting and I was raising two kids by myself. And, uh, and to be honest with you, I don't think I was aware of what was happening in Europe in terms of uh, uh, interpreting research at that time. But over time, I decided to shift my focus uh, from freelancing to teaching. And I felt the need to uh, be able to articulate and explain various aspects of uh, interpreting to my students. And I also wanted to learn um, systematic approach to uh, effective uh, teaching for okay. my interpreting classes. So that's why I um, uh, decided to pursue a PhD and I went to Tarragona. I was really fortunate to have wonderful teachers uh, such as you and uh, Franz uh, Hacker, uh, Miriam Schrezinger, Daniel Jill, and uh, Andrew Chessman. And, 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 and uh, I defended my dissertation in 2007. And I remember is, as a student, Yes. you came in saying, yeah. We interpreters have to do it this way. We yeah. have to do it this way. No, no, really. And, and then you change very quickly. I don't think. <laughs> uh, um, and I seem to I remember think, it was yeah. Michael Cronin. I think so too. Yeah, yeah I was. Um, I don't know how to say it, but I, I think I was in the bubble of this professional conference interpreting uh, world. Mm. And, but when I took. Uh, uh, Professor Cronin's uh, uh, class, he was saying, but Kayoko, think about it. Like, most of the interpreter is happening outside the conference settings. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it's a simple fact, but it was eye opening for me. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Japan, what's happening in translation studies in Japan. Oh, I need like an hour to, <laughs> to discuss it. Um, I'm going to set aside uh, interpreting research because mm. that's, um, uh, that had uh, different discourse and that has longer history. And I think it's more exciting to talk about uh, translation uh, studies in a narrow sense. Um, there are a lot of things happening in Japan right now, I think. Um, most recently, like last month, uh, there was um, a book uh, that was published uh, it's an anthology of um, important texts on translation written by uh, famous translators and writers from the uh, late 19th century to 20th century. And each text was accompanied by um, um, analysis or uh, uh, commentary by a contemporary uh, researcher. And He's a Japanese. Yeah, Japanese, Japanese. Yeah, yeah, Japanese. And um, 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 it's it's interesting, and uh, it kind of epitomizes uh, what's happening in Japan now in terms of translation studies. I have to give you some some background. Uh, Japan has 
a um, very rich and long history of translation, and uh, there have been a lot of texts uh, discussing uh, translation, but mainly uh, those were uh, self-reflective essays written by uh, famous translators or writers as to how they translated. And there were also uh, some descriptive uh, text uh, telling people how, how to translate and so on. And there are some, there are some academically oriented uh, text uh, uh, research, mainly on the history of tr uh, translation in Japan or the uh, impact or the effect of uh, translation on the development of the Japanese language and culture and so on. But most of them were not aware of um, the development of uh, uh, translation studies uh, 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 as a distinctive uh, academic discipline, uh, which happened mainly in the European context. But nowadays, uh, for the past um, 10 years, uh, uh, more recently, five, six years, there are an increasing number of works that are uh, applying uh, theories or uh, research methods and approaches developed uh, by Western, mainly by Western scholars uh, in the context of translation studies. They are applying those to the Japanese context. And going back to the so book I just what mentioned. you did in your research mm -hmm. as well. You would have done that. Yeah, right? yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. So going back to the, the anthology book, mm -hmm. the, the most recent publication, uh, it's a uh, it's a mixture of the old traditional discourse of discussing translation and a uh, new approach which uh, more or less uh, is aware of uh, uh, translation studies. Uh, um, so uh, I, I, I think this, this hybridity is mm -hmm. uh, very in, in interesting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there should be a specifically Japanese or Asian translation studies? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, when I started studying in Tarragona, I thought that what I was learning was so Eurocentric. Um, I guess it was just because the, the data or examples or the context that were given to us were in European languages or in um, they concern European countries and so on. But nowadays uh, I, I see more and more papers originating in China or India and we have uh, more new information and perspectives on uh, translation from different uh, parts of the world. Um, I don't uh, believe in this dichotomy uh, of uh, Western translation theories and Asian translation theories and so on. I think they should uh, engage in interaction, uh, dialogue, uh, that uh, would uh, hopefully lead to a shared uh, discovery. What kind of research do you think mm. we should be doing at the moment? For That's example, mm -hmm. young researchers, what, what are some topics or areas that you would like okay. them to go into? Um, at the moment, uh, I would really like to see more research on the effect of uh, uh, database-based uh, machine translation, mm -hmm. such as like Google Translate and uh, 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 translation memory and uh, uh, the crowdsourcing uh, on the practice of uh, translation and the. Uh, uh, like crowdsourcing, you mean non-professional translation, exactly, right? exactly. voluntary yeah, translation. Right, right, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to see more research on the effect of those new developments on the practice of translation and the mm. teaching of or the training of uh, uh, translators. Does that just concern translation or interpreting as well? Um, not as much mm. in interpreting. Um, I have a list of topics for interpreting studies for myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, so you're not going to give them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would, uh, I would like to know why uh, Obama and Bush sound equally presidential, articulate, and uh, um, intelligent in the Japanese interpretation. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You're That's welcome. A good